A classic example of successful biological control is the Valdalia beetle for control of cottony cushion scale in citrus. In 1868, the cottony cushion scale was introduced to California from Australia and became a serious pest of citrus and ornamentals. In 1887, C.V. Riley, the chief of the Division of Entomology for the USDA, convinced the Florida Fruit Growers Convention to pressure the U.S. Congress to provide $2,000 for the covert collection of natural enemies in Australia. He sent Albert Cobiel to Australia, who returned with fly parasitoids and the Valdalia beetles. The Valdalia beetles ate their way through infestations of cottony cushion scale. The citrus industry was saved and biological control became popular. The beetle was extremely easy to establish at new locations. For example, only four adults were taken to Peru and successful populations developed. There was fantastic control of the scale until DDT was used in orchards in the late 1940s, which killed the natural enemies. Although the fly parasitoid was mostly forgotten, both agents are still established in California controlling the scale. I'm Dr. DeBusk, and in this video, I'm going to talk about biological control of pests, including predators, parasitoids, and microbes. Insects are strongly regulated by naturally occurring enemies, mainly predators, parasites or parasitoids, pathogens, and or competitors. In most managed ecosystems, these biological interactions are disrupted compared with natural ecosystems, and certain species escape natural regulation and become pests. In biological control, or biocontrol, Human intervention attempts to restore some balance by introducing or enhancing the natural enemies of target pests. One advantage of natural enemies is their host specificity, but a drawback is that they do not eradicate pests. They may not completely eliminate all economic consequences, but they can reduce the pest population below the economic threshold. Classical biological control involves the importation and establishment of natural enemies of exotic pests and is intended to achieve control of the target pest with little further assistance. This form of biological control is appropriate when insects that spread or are introduced, usually accidentally, to areas outside of their range become pests mainly because of the absence of adapted or co-evolved natural enemies. Besides the Valdalia beetle, other successful introductions include wasp parasitoids of the cereal leaf beetle, parasitoids of the alfalfa weevil, carabids of gypsy moss suppression, and many more. Despite the many beneficial aspects of this control strategy, negative environmental impacts can arise, such as agents that fail to control pests and exasperated pest problems where the agent becomes a pest. Some may feed on native insects rather than their intended target. Augmentation is sometimes used as a general term for the supplementation of existing natural enemies, including periodic release of those that do not establish permanently, but nevertheless are effective for a while after release. Periodic releases may be made regularly during a season so that the natural enemy population is gradually increased to a level where pest control is very effective. Augmentation or periodic release may be achieved in one of two ways, inoculation or inundation. Inoculation involves the release of small numbers and may be made as infrequently as once a year to reestablish a species of natural enemies killed out periodically due to unfavorable environmental conditions. For example, trichogramma and encarsia wasps are mass reared and released into greenhouses where their progeny provide season-long control. Inundative re releases involves mass releases of natural enemies at frequent intervals to suppress the pest population. Clear examples of this are intima pathogens such as certain bacteria and fungi used as microbial insecticides. Augmentative releases are particularly appropriate for pests that have good dispersal abilities with high reproductive rates, features that make them unsuitable candidates for classical biological control. Conservation biological control is another broad strategy for biological control that aims to protect and or enhance the activities of natural enemies and reduce the effects of pests. In some ecosystems, this may involve preservation of existing natural enemies through practices that minimize disruption to ecological processes. This may include reducing or ceasing insecticide use that interfere with predators or parasitoids. 
This may include environmental manipulation by altering the habitat available to improve conditions for their growth and reproduction by providing shelter, including overwintering sites, and providing alternative food or overposition sites. For example, flowering plants such as sesame can be planted close to rice crops in Asia to provide a nectar source for parasitoid wasps that attack brown plant hoppers. Similarly, the effectiveness of intimate pathogens of insect pests sometimes can be improved by altering environmental conditions at the time of application, such as spraying a crop with water to elevate the humidity during release of fungal pathogens. Entomophagus arthropods may be predatory or parasitic. Most predators are either other insects or arachnids, particularly spiders and mites. Predatory mites are important in regulating populations of phytophagous mites, including the spider mites. Some mites that parasitize immature or adult insects or feed on insect eggs are potentially useful control agents for certain scale insects, grasshoppers, and stored product pests. Spiders are diverse and efficient predators with a much greater impact on the insect populations than mites particularly in tropical ecosystems. The role of spiders may be enhanced in IPM by preservation of existing populations or habitat manipulation for their benefit, but their lack of feeding specificity is restrictive. Predatory beetles like ladybugs and lacewings have been used successfully in biological control of agricultural pests, but many predatory species eat a diverse amount of insects and are inappropriate for targeting particular pest insects. Entomophagous insect predators may feed on several or all stages, from egg to adult, of their prey, and each predator usually consumes several individual prey organisms during its life. With the predaceous habitat often characterizing both immature and adult instars. The other major type of entomophagous insect is parasitic as a larva and free living as an adult. The larva develops as an endoparasite within its insect host or externally as an ectoparasite. In both cases, the host is consumed and killed by the time that the fully fed larva pupates in or near the remains of the host. Such insects, called parasitoids, all are holometabolous insects and most are wasps or flies. Some parasitize eggs like trichogramma. Many of the ecto- and endoparasitoids in Aphelinidae and Certidae parasitize mealybugs, scale insects, aphids, and whiteflies. Briconids and ichneumonids have a narrow host specificity. Microorganisms include bacteria, viruses, and small eukaryotes, for example, fungi and nematodes. Some are insect pathogens, usually killing their host, and many of these are host-specific to a particular insect genus or family. Some disease organisms are fairly host-specific, for example, viruses, whereas others, such as fungal and nematode species, often have wide host ranges but possess different strains that vary in their host adaptation. Thus, when formulated as a stable microbial insecticide, different species or strains can be used to kill pest species with little or no harm to non-target insects. In addition to virulence for the target species, other advantages include their compatibility with other control methods, safety of their use, stopping insect feeding quickly, long shelf life, and ability to self-replicate. Due to the host specificity, separate microbial controls may be needed for multiple pests. Also, it is more expensive and insects become resistant to microbial pathogens. Nematodes from four families include potentially useful control agents for insects. The most common commercially are species of Styronema and Heterorhabditis. They are small, soil-dwelling nematodes associated with symbiotic gut bacteria that are pathogenic to host insects. They kill their host within two days of infection. They can be mass-produced easily and cheaply and applied with conventional equipment and can search for their hosts. They control mainly soil-dwelling beetles and Lepidoptera, but can control some plant-boring insects as well. You know the nematodes work when the insect becomes flaccid and discolored. Fungi are the most common disease organisms in insects, with approximately 750 species known to infect arthropods, although only a few dozen naturally infect agriculturally and medically important insects. At least 12 species of entomopathogenic fungi, those pathogenic to insects, have been used to develop about 170 pest control products. Fungal spores that contact and adhere to the insect germinate in senout hyphae. These penetrate the cuticle, invade the hemocele, and cause death, either rapidly due to release of toxins 
or more slowly due to massive hyphal proliferation that disrupts the insect body functions. The fungus then sporulates, releasing spores that can establish infections in other insects. Sporulation and spore germination require moist conditions. Some fungi is formulated in oil to improve infectivity. Fungi can infect insects of all ages and feeding habits. Entomopathogenic fungi are primarily used inundatively as mycoinsecticides, controlling greenhouse pests. Bacteria rarely cause disease in insects, although saprophytic bacteria, which mask the real cause of death, frequently invade dead insects. Relatively few bacteria are used for pest control, but several have been proved to be useful entomopathogens against particular pests. Painobacillus populae is an obligate pathogen of scarab beetles and causes milky spore disease, named for the white appearance of the body of the infected larvae. Ingested spores germinate in the larval gut and lead to septicemia. Infected larvae and adults are slow to die, which means that P. populae is unsuitable as a microbial insecticide, but the disease can be transmitted to other beetles by spores that persist in the soil. Thus, P. populae is useful in biological control by introduction or inoculation, although it is expensive to produce. The strains of Bacillus thuringiensis, also called Bt, have a broad spectrum of activity against larvae of many species of Lepidoptera, Coleoptera, and Aquatic Diptera, but can be used only as an inundative insecticide because of lack of persistence in the field. Bt forms spores, each containing a protein inclusion called a crystal, which is the source of the toxins that cause most larval deaths. Bt is produced in large liquid fermenters and formulated in various ways, including as dusts and granules that can be applied to plants as aqueous sprays. Currently, the most widely used isolate of Bt is available in numerous commercial products that's used to control lepidopteran pests in forests and in vegetable and field crops. Effective control of insect pests by Bt depends on the following factors the insect population being uniformly young so as to be susceptible, active feeding of insects so that they consume a lethal dose, evenness of spraying of Bt, persistence of Bt, especially lack of denaturation by ultraviolet light, susceptibility of the strain, and formulation of Bt for the insect target. Many viruses infect and kill insects, but those with potential for insect control are from just three viral groups, all with protein inclusion bodies, which enclose the virus particles. These occluded viral species are considered safe because they have been found only in arthropods and appear unable to replicate invertebrates. The useful entomopathogenic groups are the nuclear polyhedrous viruses, granulosis viruses, both belonging to the baculoviruses, the cytoplasmic polyhedrous viruses, CPVs, and the entomopox viruses, EPVs. Baculoviruses replicate within the nuclei of the host cells, whereas the CPVs and the EPVs replicate in the host cell cytoplasm. Baculoviruses have DNA genomes that are found mostly in endoterogotes, such as moth and beetle larvae, which become infected when they ingest the inclusion bodies with their food. Inclusion bodies dissolve in the high pH of the insect mid-gut and release the virions. These infect the gut epithelial cells and usually spread to other tissues, particularly the fat body. This causes the larvae to become limp, black, and die. For certain pests, viral insecticides provide feasible alternatives to chemical controls, but several factors may restrict the usefulness of different viruses such as the cost to produce the virus since the host is needed, as well as inactivation by ultraviolet light. In conclusion, biological control is a useful strategy in integrated pest management. Predators, parasites or parasitoids, and microbes can be purchased and applied as part of that strategy.